Hello, my name is Angela Pimoro and I'm a planner with Aging and Disability Services, a division of the Seattle Human Services Department, and I'm also the Funding Process Coordinator. This is the 2023 Home Delivered Meals Request for Qualification Information Session. This presentation will cover contents in the Request for Qualification, or RFQ, guidelines and application, as well as tips to consider when developing your application. This is the timeline. The funding announcement was made March 1st, and there will be two information sessions, one in person and one virtual. The last day to submit questions is April 3rd at 4, 4 o'clock, and the application deadline is April 12th at 12 p.m. noon. We plan to notify applicants at the end of June with a contract start date of January 1st, 2024. Here are the RFQ highlights. Home delivered meals are nutritious meals delivered to King County residents 60 years of age and older. Meals are tailored for older adults in King County who are unable to leave their home unassisted, unable to repair meals for themselves, and do not have a formal or informal support system to help them prepare meals. Approximately $2.4 million is available through federal, state, and local funds, and we intend to fund a maximum of three proposals. You must have at least two years of experience providing food or nutrition related services or two years of experience working with the communities identified in your proposal. You must provide home delivered meals throughout all regions of King County. If you do not provide service in all regions, you will not be considered for funding. Initial awards are for the 2024 calendar year, January through December, and we intend to renew agreements through the 2027 program year contingent on performance and funding availability. Who can apply? You must meet licensing requirements, so Washington State Business License and Seattle Business License as applicable, have a federal tax ID or employer identification number, be a private nonprofit with 501c3 tax exempt status in good standing, or a Washington State recognized tribe, or a public corporation or other legal entity in good standing. The model is outlined in the guidelines and application and include minimum expectations and high quality criteria. Applicants must demonstrate how they meet the minimum, minimum requirements and will be scored higher if they meet high quality criteria. This model is based on Washington State Department of Social and Health Services, Aging and Long-Term Support Administration, Nutrition Service Standards. To be eligible for home delivered meals, participants must be over 60 and live in King County and unable to leave their homes unassisted and unable to prepare meals for themselves unable to perform one or more of the activities of daily living or instrumental activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, cooking, or cleaning, and not have anyone help them for support. Priority populations for home delivered meals are identified through the Older Americans Act the Older Americans Act required focus outreach on individuals residing in rural communities with greatest economic need, with greatest social need, with severe disabilities, with limited English proficiency, with Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, and at risk for institutional placement. Focus populations are identified as specific racial or ethnic groups within the priority population. For this funding opportunity, the focus population are BIPOC older adults, such as American Indian, Alaska Native, Asian, Black, African American, or African descent, Hispanic or Latinx, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander. Performance commitments are defined by quantity, quality, and impact performance measures. 
The quantity performance measures are the number of meals, number of unduplicated participants, quality measure is older adults receive nutritious meals, and the impact performance measure is that percent of participants with increased food security as a result of the home delivered meals. Staff requirements include having a nutrition director with the authority to conduct day-to-day -day management and administrative functions of the program, a registered dietitian nutritionist or individual of comparable expertise must provide monitoring and oversight to ensure that meals meet nutrition guidelines, have access to a certified food protection manager, and have adequate staff to deliver the service. Other requirements include the following. Must have basic information collected for all participants. All data must be entered into GetCare, a state data system used by all era, area agencies on aging in Washington to track and report services funded by Older Americans Act and other sources. Applicants must be able to collect and report participant level data as required by our funding and nutrition screening must be offered to all participants, and this is a required data element. Each section of the narrative is worth various points. Proposal description is worth 55 points. Capacity and experience worth 20 points. Partnerships and collaboration worth 10 points. Food system and commitment to community is worth 30 points. Budget and leveraging is worth 15 points for a total of 130 points. Answer the question using the rating criteria as a guide as this is how raters will score your application. You must describe how you will meet minimum requirements and those that meet high quality criteria will be scored higher. You will also need to submit your budget sheets so your proposal budget, personnel detail budget, and meal cost worksheet and please submit these budget sheets in the Excel document form. Please con complete the meal cost worksheet using the following cost categories. Base costs are ongoing expenses and unit costs are food, supplies, and other meal costs associated with producing the meal. Then enter the total number of meals proposed and the worksheet will automatically calculate a unit rate. The next section of the meal cost worksheet is match. First, enter the monetary value of volunteer hours that will work on this program. In the second match row, enter the in-kind contributions such as the monetary value of rent or program space or other staff that will work on this program but not paid for by our funding or other non-federal funding that supports the program. Let's look at what the budget form looks like together. You can find the Excel budget form on our website. So click here to download the budget form. You can open it up. And this is the form. So there are three separate tabs. The first tab is your program budget. The second tab is your personnel budget. And the last tab is your meal cost worksheet. Start by completing the meal cost worksheet and it will automatically populate information into your total program budget sheet. So for an example, let's say you have about $600,000 for rent, another $100,000 for fringe, about $5,000 for your operating supplies, Another hundred thousand for rent, and you have about ten thousand for transportation costs, and another amount for your insurance. You have some indirect costs, and it automatically calculates a base and then you will add some of your operating costs. So this is your food and supplies for meals. And then your total number of meals.
So it'll automatically calculate a rate based on your costs, and then you include your match. So maybe you have about $200,000 worth of volunteer match, as well as some in-kind match. So your match total match contribution needs to be at least 25% of your po po total request. This will automatically populate into your total program budget. And please also include other funding that will support your program into these other categories here. You also need to manually input your personnel budget detail here. Include position, title, rate, how much is requested by our funding, and how much are, is going to be supported by other fund sources. Another attachment that you'll need to submit is a summary of proposal deliverables. Complete the summary of proposal deliverables by entering the number of meals, percent of total meals, number of participants unduplicated, and percent of total participants by geographic subregion, Seattle, North Urban, East Urban, South Urban, East Rural, and South Rural. You can find the summary of proposal deliverable sheet in attachment six of the application. Please complete the sheet, and there is an example here. This example is based on 100,000 total meals and 1,000 total participants. Please include the following with your submission. Assigned application cover sheet, the narrative response limited to 12 pages, your budget worksheets in Excel, nutrient analysis for 10 consecutive meals, including analysis for medically tailored meals, if applicable, and your summary of proposal deliverables. The following are optional documents. Please include a startup timeline if the service is new, letter of intent if you are proposing a significant collaboration with another agency, and letter of agreement if you have a fiscal sponsor. Applications can be submitted via online portal or email Please do not submit it both ways. No faxed, mailed, or in-person submissions will be accepted. Applications must be complete and on time. And they are due April 12th by 12 p.m. noon. So you can submit your application via online using that link. Please start uploading early in case you have an issue with connectivity. This is not an online application, so you cannot save your work. There's a 100 megabyte maximum for uploads. The system can only accept the stated file types. And you will receive an email confirmation after you submit your application. Please email if you have issues with uploading your application. When you click on that link, it will take you to this online submission form. Click on this home delivered meals and this is where you're able to upload your application content. You may also submit your application via email. Attachments are limited to 30 megabytes. Title your subject heading 2023 home delivered meals RFQ. You, you will receive an email acknowledging receipt of your application. After you submit your application, it's sent to a rating committee. The rating committee reviews the written application, then makes a funding recommendation. The recommendation goes to the agency director, and then you're notified of a decision. If you would like to appeal the decision, you may appeal based on two criteria. The first is the violation of policies outlined in the HSD funding process manual. The second is a violation of policies or failure to adhere to guidelines or published criteria and our procedures established in the funding opportunity. Appeals must be received within four business days from your award or denial notification, and a written decision will be made within four business days of appeal receipt. If you're awarded funding, please be prepared to provide the following documents to move forward with the contracting process. 
Here are some tips. Be specific and answer all parts of the question. Look at the rating criteria as this is how the raters will score your application. Double check your numbers and please use the Excel template and submit your budget forms with the Excel in Excel. Have someone else review your application. Start early and allow a lot of time for the submission process as, as there may be issues with connectivity. Submit all required attachments and please do not submit any materials that are not requested with your application. Also, please check the website regularly as updates and changes could be made. If you have any questions, please submit them to me via email at angela.miyamoto at seattle.gov. All questions and answers will be posted on our Funding Opportunity webpage within five business days. Only written answers are official responses. And the deadline to receive questions is April 3rd by 4 p.m. Again, here is the website that holds the RFQ information. Thank you for watching this presentation and have a great day.